And remember, there's a Snoopgate face-off in the parliament, but what has come as a twist now in it is a U-turn, so to say, by the Amnesty International Civil Rights Body of International Proportions has now said that it never claimed earlier that the NSO Pegasus list of people were spied upon, but it is only indicative containing names of people who clients of NSO, the agency, would like to spy upon. Now, dealing with these twists and the reactions that are coming in, I'm now joined by an Israeli journalist uh, who also specializes with technology, cybersecurity. Omar Kabir is now joining me. Thank you, Omar, for all the latest on that. But with so many twists that are emerging, how do you look at a list now being called indicative, which global media has taken on face value, that these were the names already spied upon? Uh, well, it's very interesting because Amnesty has, has actually never uh, changed its statement from the start. What they know is clarifying what they've been saying from the moment the story first came out there and the, the journalist consortium forbidden stories. And they are all been saying this is not a list of NSO's target. This is a list of phone numbers that have been of some interest, maybe legitimate, maybe illegitimate, to governments that are clients of NSO. Uh, the problem is that this statement got lost in the way when other media reported about the story and some of them a lot of them actually made the jump and claim well every number on this list is a number that's been targeted by nso this is not the case and nmst is just clarifying it right now that and in fact they've never said they never said it and they just want to clarify it right now so how should this list now be seen? Because it's become a global storm here in India. It's become a major showdown, Omar, in the parliament. So should it be seen only as an indicative now that these names were not spied upon, none of them? Or perhaps some may have been, as some journalists are also stating. Some may have been. Some may have been, yes. Uh, I'm guessing most of them have been not. There is no way to tell. This is just a list of numbers that have been in, in, of interest probably to governments that are clients of NSO, they are not indicative of anything behind, behind, be, uh, in addition to that. What we can say is that another part of the story uh, that this is based on a forensic analysis that has been done to 67 phone numbers, 67 num phones, devices that have been handed to Amnesty. Uh, on 37 of them, there have been found evidence, some evidence of Pegasus, software that has been installed. Uh, this is, we can say with more certainty, there have been found 37 uh, phones in this research of Pegasus uh, on these phones. Uh, the list, I don't think you can say anything with certain about the list. Certainly you can't say that a number on the list equals a number being tracked or targeted by Pegasus. So, Omer, how should now this uh, be considered? Do you think the global media misinterpreted the list? Was there confusion? Should there have been prior checks done even by the global publications before the list was put out? Um, so, a lot of the global media did uh, misinterpret the story, misrepresented it, and it's not good. It's uh, even, one might say, it's even fake news in some cases. Uh, as to the consortium behind the story, they worked on the story for a lot of time, weeks, maybe even months, and they did check it thoroughly. The problem is not with their uh, facts, it's with the way they're representing it. They're representing the list is connected to NSO, even indirectly in every story about it. Every story says this is a list of people of interest to NSO's clients. Every time the story comes up, NSO is there. Even though they are the self-claiming, admitting it is not directly connected to NSO. And this is problematic because A, NSO is not the only company selling spyware, not the only Israeli company selling spyware to various governments around the world. At the same, just last week, I had a report saying about a kangaroo, another Israeli company, that its spyware was found on 100 devices and this was confirmed by Microsoft. So why not? And this company also shares clients with NSO. They both have the UAE and Saudi Arabia and other countries as clients. So why are the media, why is the media reporting the story doesn't say this is a list of potential targets by countries that are Kandiru's clients. 
The problem here is the connection that's being made to NSO of putting NSO in the spotlight with a list that is not connected yes. to it, at least as far as we've seen right now. And this is not justifiable, in my opinion. Omar, let's also talk about NSO. Uh, does that mean uh, that the NSO gets a clean shit? Does that mean that uh, about this whole issue and speculation of spying by either Pegasus spyware or others must also be taken into consideration? NSO should not get a clean sheet. Again, there was another finding, 37 phones that were physically examined and there were traces of Pegasus found, found on them. There were a lot of other research throughout the last five years that NSOs that proven or found into a reasonable degree of uh, reliability, uh, NSO software on uh, journalist phones, human rights activ activists, uh, dissidents from around the world. So NSO is a problematic company. There is misuse of its product has been proven time and time again, and it definitely should not get a clean sheet. How dangerous do you think or how widespread, according to you, is the spying of these names, big names specifically by agencies, that will not even leave any trail of having been snooped upon on their phones? Because the question that is being asked here is, if some of these names were being snooped upon, what is the evidence? On what basis has it been confirmed that these names were in fact spied upon, Omar? So, again, if you are talking about the list, uh, just that the number is on the list, there is no evidence that it's been spied upon, and you, should, you shouldn't take it that the number on the list equal it's been spied upon by Pegasus. This is definitely not the case, and Amnesty saying that now, and we've been saying that from the beginning. How widespread the problem is, it depends how you define widespread. Governments all over the world, everyone who can afford it or can develop it, are using this kind of software. A lot of it for legitimate uses, as in catching pedophiles or stopping terrorists. Some of it for illegitimate, illegitimate uses. So it's being used globally by a lot of government. If you're talking, is it being used about a lot of people? Well, no, this sort of program is very specialized. It's okay. very unique. It's very targeted. It's not necessarily being used on hundreds of thousands of people, maybe not even on tens of thousands of people at any given time. Omar Kabir, Israeli journalist, I want to thank you for speaking to India today to explain uh, in, in bigger perspective of how precisely this controversy is now playing out. Thank you so much, Omar, for speaking to India Today TV. We will continue to get you all the updates on this big story. Remember, this is Snoopgate not just as an Indian storm in the parliament politically, but it's a global storm already. I'm heading into a very short break. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching.